So you're doing research on where to put your money and you're looking at average annual rate of return. Is that the best metric to buy investments on? I'm Ryan Wheelis, host of the On The Money YouTube channel powered by Allied Wealth. And today I want to spend a little bit of time showing you the most important thing you should know about a mutual fund, an ETF, a stock portfolio, a separately managed account, whatever those things are, the most important metric you should know about that portfolio or investment before you put your money into it. And guess what, folks? It will surprise you. It's not the average annual rate of return. All right. So let's dive in here. I'm going to use uh, Fidelity's Contra Fund um, in our example today. And then by no means am I endorsing this, this fund or nor am I talking bad about the fund either. All right. If you want to invest your money in this fund, uh, consult the financial advisor and understand that investing in this fund absolutely has risk. But I want to use this as an example because when we get recommended a fund or we see a fund, we often get on the world's greatest financial advisor, which we know is Google, right? Uh, and we get on the Google and we start doing research. So I pulled up the fact page uh, for the Fidelity Contra Fund. And usually when we are you know, investors, we start looking at things like this chart right here. Uh, it looks really good, you know, with some pretty good returns there. Um, but then we scroll down here and we go straight to the magical word of performance, right? And we think, hey, performance is the best metric, right? So if you look at this fund, it's got some pretty uh, solid numbers on it, uh, meaning a like year to date, uh, as the time of this video, the fund's up 15% compared to the market's not up anywhere near 15% this year. The one year annualized return is 3.56. The three years, 1124. There's 10 years at 10.68. Um, uh, excuse me, five years at 10.68. There's 10 years at 12.79. And then over the life of the fund, the average annual return is 12.4%. Pretty solid, all right? And so we think to ourselves, man, that 12.4% return more than meets the hurdle rate I need to have enough, uh, my, my investors producing enough income in retirement or it's enough growth rate for me to get to where I want to go so I can have enough money to retire. So we say, hey, we're all in, we'll take it, right? Well, folks, if you're buying on that, that philosophy, you really are setting yourself up for potential failure because it's equally important to know how well this thing can perform. This is a very good performing fund, by the way, um, but what does it do in down markets? And so let's scroll down here and look at a scenario like 2022. Uh, where the market was down 18.11%. We also know the bond market was down substantially as well. And see how this fund performed. Well, man, you know, the fund, you know, was down 28% in 2022. But heck, prior to that, in 19, it did 29%. and 20, it did 32%. Then 24, it did 24%. I mean, those are some pretty solid numbers, folks. But again, using this for illustrating purposes, are these the right metrics to look at? Uh, and again, it's important to know what the fund has done over a year-to-year -year basis. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I don't disagree with that. But let's keep in mind uh, this 12.4% average annual number here. We looked at it a minute ago. Let's keep that in mind as we go through here. So we keep looking here. And then a lot of times what we do is we get into um, to fees. And fees are super important, folks. But, you know, if you've got too heavy of fees in your portfolio, it can really erode the growth potential of your fund over time or your portfolio over time, right? So it's important to know things like expense ratio, are there any 12B1 fees, uh, what's your turnover rate, because that can cause taxes, uh, minimum to invest, things like that. Those are all important to know. Uh, and then this is how the fund is currently allocated across the various sectors, all right? But we're still not to the absolute most important metric. Now we're gonna get there, all right? Go down here on these reports and look at volatility measures. This is where we really get into the meat and potatoes about how this fund will perform in down markets. And we're gonna look at this number right here, which is standard deviation of 19.64%. So what I wanna teach you today is how to identify how this fund may perform in a major down market. And if you know that in advance, you know whether or not you would have the ability to stick with this fund, for instance, in 2022, when the fund was down 28%. If you panicked 
and sold that fund down 28% when you've missed half the return to the upside that's done this year, and you may have locked in a loss at a lower point in your portfolio, and now you're sitting here going, man, I'm second guessing myself, I messed this up, what do I do, all right? Well, I think you should know how the fund will perform in down markets or volatile markets before you invest your money, not after. So again, we're gonna use this 19.64 uh, uh, number, all right? And we're gonna go back up here to the top, we've got 12.4, all right? So we've got uh, 19.64 and 12.4, all right? So the 12.04 uh, uh, number is our average annual return, all right? The 19 uh, point, uh, what was it again, 5.4 number, all right? The 19.54 number is our standard deviation, all right? So the way this works is you kind of look at a bell curve, all right? And this right here is the average, okay, and the curve. And this is the standard deviation. And we're gonna look at that standard deviation is one unit, okay? So the way this works, folks, is in a down, in an up market, the stock market will typically move at the most one standard deviation, okay, to the positive. So that means one unit this way out would be uh, 19.54, uh, all right? And the way we figure this out is we add 19.54 to 12.04, uh, and that gives us what our return could be in this fund, the stock market had a really good year, which is uh, 29, about 31 and a half percent, we'll call it. So we could have about a 31 and a half percent return in this fund if the stock market did really, really, really well with the upside. And that's awesome. I hope we have a lot of those years. But the challenge with this is, is what about the downside? And there's an old saying that markets will always decline much faster than they rise, all right? So in this scenario here, the market will usually move three standard deviations to the downside, all right? So remember, this 19.54 number is a one standard deviation, okay? So if this fund were to follow historical patterns in major down markets, it's pretty easy to see that three times this is about 60, about 60, uh, call it 57%. Then you add in um, the number here to your return. So you take 12% uh, minus 19% gives us seven, okay? Uh, and then we've got two more to go there. It's 38, seven, 45. So this fund could actually lose about 45% to the downside. And here's how I calculated that, okay? I took a 12% return, 0.04% uh, return, and then I uh, did a negative, and I added that to a 19.54% return, and then I added that number, which is about um, a seven, okay, to two more units of standard deviation, 19.54 is one unit here, all right, and then 19.54 is one unit here, okay, because again, we're going down to standard deviation, if we add that all up together, we can be down about 45%. So what I'm showing you here, folks, is this. Look at standard deviation. Always know the amount of risk you're taking per unit of return you're getting. And this is a super easy way to calculate your standard deviation. And you're gonna be able to find these standard deviations usually on the risk metrics portion or volatility measures portion of any fund fact page, which I'm showing you right here. So a quick analogy on how to tell how your mutual fund or stock portfolio or separately managed account or whatever your money is in could perform in a down market. And that's super important to know before you invest money, not after, because you want to know how you would deal with that in the moments of that fund being down. And if that fund was down at the bottom for the year and you panicked and sold out, all you did was lock in a loss and now your money's not exposed to the market to recapture those losses. And you're sitting there going, what did I do, man? This is, this is terrible, right? So in order to know about how you would deal with that fund, know the standard deviation, know the return, and know this. The standard deviation is one unit of measure, all right? And the market to a really good year will move one standard deviation to the positive, and in a really bad year will move typically three standard deviations to the negative. So one of these things is super important to know. Again, folks, I'm Ryan Wheelis, host of the All the Money YouTube channel, powered by Allied Wealth. If you like the content we're putting out, hit the like button down below, like the video. Also, hit the subscribe button, and we'll keep updating you as new videos come out.